Parshas Bahar. Parshas Bahar Perek. Right, we'll start here. It's Perek Chav Dalit, I believe. Let's see. Let's make sure. Perek Chav Hey. Perek Chav Hey. Pazik Yadalit. So this is Perek Chav Hey. Pazik Yadalit, page six ninety eight. So the Pasuk here states, right, you see where that is, at page 698, halfway down? Pasuk Yudal. Yeah, Pasuk Yudal. V'chi simkaru mimkar lamisecha. It says that if a person wants to do a sale, he wants to sell something to his friend, or if he wants to buy something from his friend, al toinu ishas amisa. You should not overcharge him, right? Literally means don't aggrieve him, which means don't uh, rip each other off. Don't rip him off. Don't rip him off. What happens if the friend is not Jewish, though? Is that now it does say okay. it does say Achiv and Amisecha here, so we'd have to go into the question of a non-Jew. Okay. But it, at least in terms of Jews, in terms of Jews, you cannot rip him off. Just like uh, there's going to be a different. Uh, right? This is called Oynas Mamon. From the word Toynu is to not uh, not to hurt him with money, and therefore the verse continues. Bemisbar Shanim. However many, let's you're selling him a field. So the amount of years after Yovel, how long do you sell him a field? So if you sell him a field, it goes till Yovel, till the Jubilee year. So that's 50 years. So you're selling it to him in essence for 50 years. So you have to calculate it like that. The Mizpah shot him the amount of years. Achar Yovel, you just finished Yovel, let's say. So that's how many years. That's how many years you're buying it from your friend. The Mizpah Shnei Tavuos, Yimachalach. That's the amount of the, right, the, the seasons that you'll get. If it's a lot of years, Tarb and it will be a bigger sale. Lefi, right, it will be more money. If it will be less years, Tarb and it will be less of a, of a price. He's selling you the amount of food and the products and the seasons. That's what you and you shouldn't overcharge. Now it goes both ways. You shouldn't charge him too much. Right, if you're the seller, and the buyer also has a prohibition. The buyer shouldn't pay too little if the seller doesn't know the proper price. Right, let's say you're selling, uh, you know, something, and you don't you don't realize that's worth a lot more here. Because cause the first thing, before we get to sellers and buyers, the first thing is, what you brought up here before, that it depends on the item. Every item is different. Depends where you are. Right, let's say you say, well, I'll sell, um, uh, um, uh, let's say, a bottle, right, a cup of soda. How much, uh, how much is a can of soda? A can of soda, dollar, right? It depends where you're at. Yeah, right. Let's say you go to like a fancy hotel, right, buy a can of soda there. Four dollars. But they've transgressed this violation. Have they? That's the question. Have they transgressed it, right? Probably not. Because there's a cost of putting out that particular drink in that location. They have branded it, right? No, right? So, or there's also another thing. Market value? There's also the place. The the place where you are and the, the area, the atmosphere. For there, for the hotel, that's what the price is. Right. For, you know, for your convenience store down the block, right, it's much cheaper. The same way you go to Sobeys, you go to the department store, you want to buy flowers or something, right? It'll be, uh, you know, or you go to No Frills, right? It'll be even cheaper. And then if you go to Sue's, or you go to somewhere else, any other place, it's going to be much, much more. Especially on Rosh Hashanah. Especially on Rosh Hashanah. Sure. Right? So, so how could that be? Who, who is doing a The answer is, right, like you're saying, it, it depends on the, the course that they have, right? They're, they're putting it into, you know, they have to pay more. They're buying, they're not buying in bulk. No Frills is buying in, in big, big bulk, so it's, it's cheaper for them, and or whatever the case is. And if, in a little store, you know, or, you know, the, the convenience store, they're going to charge more, maybe, because they get Get it more expensive for them it's more so for the, it depends where you're selling it the hotel right depends where you're selling uh it's a hotel so it costs more for a can of soda because the alternative is very difficult usually why what's the alternative well when you're at a hotel to go to the convenience store it's yeah. usually like a 10 minute walk so they can they'll sell the can of coke but four dollars no, counting on the fact that you you're not going to walk 10 minutes but but That's then that but that would yeah but that would be on no then that would be on no 
that, that, is that the only way they're able to do it? Or they're selling you a lot of things, like you're saying. They're selling you the lobby and the service. They right? also brought you into this hotel away from the community. <laughs> it's the whole Avira, the whole atmosphere. Yeah. No yeah. 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 Right now. Now that could be there. It could be that that they got you there. There, there's no way to go. Yeah. There, there's no way to go. That's true. There, that's true. Can't bring it in. That's true. But, uh, but in terms of other places, it, it depends on each area what it's worth. You know, for that area and for for that particular group of people, right? So it, it's all it's all uh, it varies. It all varies. What you're saying is, in these situations, they don't know the identity of the purchaser. Right? Who doesn't? The hotel. It doesn't know if, if who's going to buy that coke. It just says this coke before the purchaser materializes. This coke is four dollars. Yeah. But but they know the, they know who's buying it. Why? It could be here. It says you shouldn't like your fellow in English and you read it as your brother. But like it says, don't. Overcharger right. for your brother. Right, right. Well, what if I put the price up before I know if a Jew or a non-Jew is going to be the person? Yeah, but it, right, but it, it doesn't matter. That's but but matter. the point is, you're trying to overcharge him. Yeah. If a Jew will come into the store, you're overcharging him. Okay. But the, the, the other but the other case is, let's say we're that's how much it costs. Right, it depends on every item. You have to give him the market value of the item. Right. So whatever the market value is, that, that's what you're entitled to charge. Right. You're allowed to make a little bit of profit with the market. Right. The market value is with the profit. What if you're the only one selling that? I, I can make the market value. Right. And now you, you know that your cost of production is X, and you charge four times X because there's nowhere else to get this item. Have you not violated this? That's a good question. Uh, it depends. Like if that, if you make the real market value, if, if, let's say if that's the real market value. So it could be that could be that's the market value. It could be you're, 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 you're allowed to sell like that, right? Let's say to import, you know, let's say you want to import something, you know. Uh, I just heard someone saying, you know, they're going to start importing. They're trying to put a copyright. They're importing some type of thing, you know. So let's say they're making the market, and it, people people hold it, you know, it's, it's worth it. Maybe you know they think it's fair. They're going to buy from you, right? So it could be if, if you're making a good market price, then maybe it won't be uh, it won't be enough. So it all depends on. on as long as it's the market, you know what what the normal uh, people would, would take such a price in stride. That, that that's not called overcharging. Problem is where you just take something and you just hike it up, you know. And, and let's say he doesn't realize. That would be the class of okay. He's talking about taking advantage. Right. Yes. Don't take advantage of somebody's ignorance. Because you know you you know that the price of this coffee is a dollar. Everything he doesn't know. Right. Oh, brings one dollar, two dollars. Others save it. Right. Now I've taken advantage of him not knowing. Whereas everybody else knows a dollar. You guys would not have bought it with the two dollars. He doesn't know you'll buy it. Now right. Taking advantage of him. Right. Which leads to which leads to the other point of that the this. Mitzvah is not only on the seller, but the mitzvah is also on the buyer. I don't know what the market is. Let's say no, but l l let's say the buyer comes into the store and he sees that the seller doesn't realize how much it's worth, and the seller is really charging less than he should, less than now, less than even like the seller made a mistake, right? The ninja, what? Mislabeled. Yeah, let's say mislabeled. Or, it, this is an interesting thing. Not so many people know this, Din. So if there's a gas top pump in uh, one of eight pumps here at 50 cents, it would be wrong of me to use if it's labeled wrong? The owner's a Jew. Right. Yeah, so, so if it's labeled wrong, right, if the owner's a Jew. What about because if it's a boy, there's a principle of takum or something? I, I forgot what it's called, you tell me. That if a boy makes a mistake, you're not obligated to. Yeah, to, uh, tais akum. Tais akum. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. But in terms of, but he he brought up it before, that could be the whole rule of Aina is only relevant to Jews. Because the verse says, Ami Secha. Ami Secha. It says, your friend, your brother. Brother, says your brother there, the next plastic also. So, therefore, could we ha we'd have to look into that. Right? We'd have to see. Could, I could even see how the the Menchus Chinuch, how the Chinuch rules. Right? We'll see if he brings this down. Uh, uh,
one of the pumps at 50 cents, I think you'd have an obligation to pump Right, right. And you would not be allowed to Then it would be your... Right, right. Because if, let's say, if the, if, the, if the seller doesn't understand, right, he's an unsuspecting, he doesn't realize, that's where, that's where the rule comes in, and it's similar to stealing. This is similar to stealing. So it doesn't matter, like, how much, you know, it's a little off, a lot off. If he doesn't realize, right, he doesn't realize that he... I'm not sure if it's, uh, like, he doesn't realize the true value. Right. If he doesn't realize the true value, then uh, then that would be a problem. So yeah. feet, then. Right. So, what? Yeah, I, you'd have to think about it, right? It's hard. It's a hard thing to think about. Let's say he doesn't realize the true value. Right. That would be a case where a person doesn't realize. Right. So what, what if you have a coffee? It's worth a dollar. And then uh, everybody comes to me. He's like, I buy that coffee for a dollar. He said, Well, you know what? I can't sell this to you for a dollar because I know there's a boy over there who's really stupid. I can sell it to him for three dollars. So <laughs> I'm not gonna sell it to you. I'm gonna sell it to him because I lose my opportunity to rip somebody else off. So what's the case? You have uh, I have an item yeah. that I think that I can convince somebody to overpay for. Oh. oh. So, uh, but you know, so a Jew wants to buy it. I uh, say, well, I can't sell it to you because I'd have to sell it at a fair price. So I lose my opportunity to rip off that unsuspecting uh, over there. Well, I'll have to sell for three dollars. Well, so okay, it could be it could be that would be okay because um, it could be that you don't you, you don't have to sell it to the Jew. It could be not to sell it to the Jew. So if you if you would be allowed to sell it to a guy, then it could be just wait. Problematic though, because they're now creating an anti social rule, really. Interesting uh, question. See, we have to think about it. Uh, we have to think about it. It's a good question. Uh, we have to look into the, the idea of a goy. But now, we have to think about it. I want to look into this uh, about a goy. But now, here's a question about land. What do you think about land? Right? Based on these, uh, this idea that we spoke out here, what do you say about land? Well, that seems fair, the way they're talking, how many years produce you're going to be able to get from it. Kind of seems fair. Oh, so so that that if, you have, if you have 49 years of, of that's going to be in your possession, you're going to reap the benefits for 49 years, you might pay a higher price than somebody getting it three years before the next Jubilee comes. That's for sure. Yeah. So I, I was just wondering, they need two men in there. Uh, so, they, yeah. so they're going, but with them going, we might not have enough later on for us. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Do, do you want to dive in or not? No, no, no you're going to dive in. Okay, sure. Okay, we'll see. So, so Irving is saying that it depends when you buy the land. If you buy the land right after the Jubilee year, you're buying 49 years of land. 49 years of use of the land. If you buy it one year right before Jubilee, right, then uh, you're only buying one year of land. So the answer is you're right. You're right, but that's called market value. That's not called... Oh, oh, why is he paying 49 times the price? That's not a problem of, of ripping him off because that's the price. That's the, uh, you're getting 49 times more property. But would say actually you're leasing it. Right. And then uh, right. years in the lease determines uh, what you pay. Right. 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 That would be that would be essentially what it is because the land reverts back to the original owner at, at the, at the old year. At the 50th year. At the 50th year, yeah. So that's the idea there. Now, so the question is, so what's the rules? So what's the rules of Ona? What's the rules of, right, it's called Ona. Ona is to rip off your friend. Ona's mamon. Mamon means money. So if you rip him off in terms of money, that's Ona's mamon. What's, sorry, what's the word you're saying, pronounce? Right, look at the verse. Hana? No, Hana. Hana's pleasure. Hana is pleasure. So, so we're reading the verse, verse you, you, Yudalit, Yudalit, okay. 14. Right. And if you buy yourself from your friend, Al Tainu is a Tainu. Okay. Tainu. The word Tainu, right, there states, don't aggrieve him. Don't rip him off. Right? And this is a very important uh, part here, right? In terms of business, don't grieve your friend. We're going to see later on, if you skip to Pasuk Yod Zayin, Pasuk 17, there it says again, if you notice, it says again. Look at the bottom, third line to the bottom of the page. There it again says, Don't grieve your friend. So you might ask me, why do you have to say twice, don't aggrieve your friend? So for this, right, you see, you see it says it twice? So the answer to that is that Pusik, the verse later on, 17, is referring to a different form of aggrieving, a different form of hurting. It's referring to hurting your friend with words. Um, that's called hurting a friend with words. Oh, nas tevarim, making your friend feel bad. Right? If you tell your friend a comment, you make him feel bad. You know, you tell 
okay. you know, you let's so say a guy that, uh, is a uh, convert. So you go over to the convert and you so say, uh, how you doing? You know, no, you uh, no, I remember you when you used to, uh, you used to be uh, not even a Jew. You used to be uh, doing everything that, that a not Jew does. I remember you used to eat uh, everything not kosher. That's called on us devour. That's called painting a friend with words. Now, it doesn't have to be such an extreme example. It could be you and your friend. And you go over to your friend and you say, Irving, this is a beautiful shirt. Where'd you get it from? Uh, so why, would you like to know the market value? No, I want to know. <laughs> I want to know. Where'd you get it from? The local garbage dump? <laughs> That's called on us devour. Just kidding. It's a great shirt. Yeah. But if you tell your friend anything which you would grieve your friend, any comment, right, it's, 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 it's one of the hidden mitzvahs. Any, right, not so many people know about this mitzvah, but it's a mitzvah that you shouldn't make your friend feel bad. Any word that you say, that's the verse. Don't agree with your friend. And the next words of the verse are, you should fear God. Because you might say, oh, it's making a joke, or I didn't mean mean anything so you have to fear God Hashem knows exactly what you had in mind it's your intent it's your intent now you also have to be careful because if you do if you do a, if you say a comment then you hurt your friend inadvertently so that's called a inadvertent sin it's like a guy turned on a light on the Shabbos you didn't realize right you forgot it Shabbos you turned on a light so it's inadvertent it's not a, it's not astringent like you know if you did it on purpose but it's inadvertent right he you know a guy uh, you know just got up in the morning or something he got up in the morning didn't realize it's yeah. inadvertent. So, of course, I have. Maybe. Yeah. What? Sorry, yeah. Force a habit sometimes. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Like so that's that's a, it's called a show gig. And it was it was a, a show gig. It was a mistake. So it was a mistake. If you go over to your friend, right, and you, you have to be very careful. You know, you go over and uh, you ever ask someone how much he paid for something, or you know, let's say he bought something and, he, and now you see it's much. Uh, you know, he, he overpaid. You know, let's say he got you know he got he got ripped off, but he can't return. You know, he bought it and that's it. You have to be very careful. You don't say, oh, you paid, you know, you paid this for that, for that uh, house, that car. Oh, I could have got it for you much cheaper if you would have came to me. You're just going to make him feel bad because now there's no point anymore, right? So you're not allowed to tell him anything. So you have to be very careful. You have to, even by mistake, you have to be careful not to slip up and say, whoa, you know, people won't do it. They won't do it to hurt their friend a lot of times, right? People are, they're well-meaning. They say, oh my gosh, you paid so much. So those words, even though you're not trying to hurt him, you're just trying to express your disbelief. Wow, I can't believe you paid so much. I could have got it cheaper. That's called on us devour him. That's called, it's a, it's a show gig. It's a mistake. It's a mistake. But you're causing him pain because now you feel so bad. Oh, I paid so much. If I would have known, I could have saved myself uh, $20,000 or whatever. So you could do it. It's, it's a mistake, but you're causing him pain. So it would be a mistake. It would be a show game. So he still should be always on guard even for a mistake. So that's verse 17. That's called a grieving your friend with words. But in our verse, Pasuk Yodalid, right, 14, here is called a grieving your friend with money. With money matters. So that is a different, no. it's the same word, toinu, okay. don't agree with your friend, it but it's a different idea, no. different area. Stick, it's in terms of money, sad. not to rip him off. Now, the question is now, so let's say a person uh, does this. Let's say they do, they make a mistake, and they sell, they maybe sold someone, let's say there. they do sell someone, maybe and they, they're, they're way off. They overcharged him Mehemen. by uh, a lot of I money. So what is the the boundaries here. Like How much do we call overcharging so that it already that takes effect in halacha? That it actually makes a difference. So the answer is a sixth. Uh, oh. A sixth is the magic number. 16.6%. If you overcharge someone 16%, then that is where and if he eats the, it, that is the Avera. He will have eaten under, a six, under 16%. Okay. We, we say that there is no problem. So either way. Yeah. Whether the up or 16 down. down. Like so now, the other person uh, wouldn't be obligated to say you're going too low if it's 16 down? No. It, right. So if, if you're the seller, you can't overcharge him by 16%. Right? Or, or 6 so, so if you have, let's say, you're selling, uh, you know, a pair of uh, glasses that cost, let's say, uh, 
That's a hundred dollars. Two hundred and sixteen dollars. That's a three hundred sixty dollars. Three hundred sixty dollars. What? What do you? A camera. Three hundred sixty dollars. You can't sell it to him for, let's say, four hundred and twenty. Right, because it's sixty dollars. Once you get to sixty dollars over, right, right. that's a six. Right, right. You cannot overcharge him by a six. And that will be an Avera of a Nas Mum. So what is it at six? Till a six, there's different different ideas put forth, but till a six we say maybe people they're not so you know, uh, worried about it, or, or they say maybe I can't. You know, I, I wouldn't be able to get him glued down to be well. What's the exact price? You know, we'll go to we'll go to the court, and he might say the price is a little bit different. You know, so so it's not an exact price. So let's say I think you uh, you overcharged me by five dollars. So you might go to the court, and the court say no. Uh, who said you're right? You're wrong about your assessment of how much it's worth in the first place. So up till the sixth. It's also an idea that people uh, they, they they don't mind for a little bit a little bit to overpay a little bit or maybe they wouldn't you know they wouldn't go to court for any you know that little bit where did the one six come from where or is it based on or is it something else so the Gemara brings down the Gemara brings down this idea of a six and the uh, based on something on a reason the root, I'll give you the idea how the Gemara brings it. The Gemara says, once you go over a sixth, then the sale is void. The sale is off. You could go back to the store, even if you used it already, you could go back and say, here's, here's the item. The sale was a called a mekartos. It was a false sale. And the reason is, Tulsa says the reason, because it's you... The uh, price you gave was so far up, so so overcharged. It was more than even normal, and therefore it's like it's like a, it's like it's not a sale. Like it's a joke. You charge so much that it's like you didn't sell it, and therefore such a sale is not fitting to keep on to to be existing. Such a sale is, is you overcharge too much, and therefore there's that's called the whole sale is off. Does it state where where they get the idea of a now, six as opposed to a fifth? Or uh, seven. Or now, where they got this? The testimony of owner themselves. So then, Naman, it is believed, and they can no longer bring this court. Like, is a six a, a particular number that we find somewhere else? So that, that well, let me tell you. That, let, let's go like this. Let's go with the, with the less than a sixth. Less than a sixth, we're saying that there's no problem. And the reason is, uh, I'll give you one reason is one reason, a simple reason that the Rambam says is because less than a sixth people overlook. Yeah. Well, less than the 60, you overcharge me a little bit. Okay, I'm Michael. Michael means I uh, forgive it. So less than a sixth is is the amount of overlooking. Ramam, that's the Ramam. Ramam says this in the rules of Mechira, of selling and buying. People will be Mocho, right? You ever have this, you know, someone, uh, you know, someone ever lends you money, you know, so you say, you know, you pay back, you say, I don't remember, was it, uh, you know, this amount, $5 or $6? So you say, I'm like, oh, Correct. Correct. I give up, I'm, I'm, I'm But in, in money, actually, that's a problem. I mean, that's not a good example, is it? Number two. Like in, 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 in giving back interest. If you say it's a gift, right. You say, say it's a separate gift. It's not, uh, it's not part of the loan. Let's say we'll take it out, right, it's not part of the loan. Right, yeah, let's say just, uh, it's not part, it's a gift. It's right. not, so people are mocha. People overlook different, uh, you know, small amounts because that's they're not they're not so uh, insistent, you know. They're that's the first idea. And the second idea is what I said before that who could say the exact amount? You're going to say you you're, you're going to say you were overcharged by you know two dollars, and maybe the court will say you're wrong and how much the price? That's not the market value, and, and it's really it was the right price. So therefore, because of that idea. In other words. If he wasn't therefore, clear with himself that he did it, there's no, uh, therefore the, the Chachamim said that's how they got to a six. Those two reasons are how we got to the number six, 16 percent. From those two, those two logical ideas. Okay? And now, right, so and, and based on that, now you go higher. If there's a sixth, if it's, if it's more than a sixth, then we say the whole sale is void. Okay. If you hit the, the well, number on the button, a sixth exactly, so it's a middle middle ground. Okay. The middle so ground is that the sale is not is not over, but you have to give back the, the uh, that, that sixth. Yeah. 
That's exactly, if you hit it, hit it on exactly a six, then you have to purchase a nose. When he's Tommy. What if I know that this is uh, overcharged by 30%? Right. I want to, let's say, you know, but I, I say, okay, so I can bring this back later. I can avoid the sale later. So I'll take advantage of the situation. I'll take this product and I'll use it and I'll return it later and I'll get my money back. And you want to use it? You're going to use it also? The, yeah, I'll have the benefit of using it until I return it because I know that I'm taking so, advantage of the situation. So they do speak about your question and it's a disagreement, but uh, it seems that it seems that he could do that. Yes, it seems that he could do that. Even the, he'll demand it later. Yeah. Disregard the guy. Yeah. Because he'll say, it, it is interesting. We would have to look into it, but it seems you're allowed to do that. It doesn't seem right to do something like that. Yeah. If the person has that intent right from the beginning. This is by, by exactly a six. By exactly a six, that's, that's the rule. Now, so what are we coming at? If it's ex if it's more than a six, the whole sale is gone. The whole sale is void. No good. Now, if it's exactly a six, so then the amount overcharge you have to give back. That those sixty dollars you have to give back to him, but the sale is still good. Right? Sale is still good. And if it's less than a sixth, we're coming out that less than a sixth is is nothing. Uh, is no the sale still goes, and the money overcharge he gets to keep. And they, these are the two reasons from the Rambam and uh, and the Rush. In in dollars and cents for us. Yeah. Like if, if you're talking uh, ten thousand dollars purchase, you're yeah. talking sixteen hundred dollars. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, yeah, we we don't more. relate that as <laughs> I'm going to you sixteen hundred dollars. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not something we if do. If it's a bigger price item, then 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 it's also the stakes are higher. But, right. He's also making more and more profit. I think it's, it's, it's everything. I think it's bigger price, bigger stakes, bigger, you know. I think it's, all, it's also bigger mechila, bigger forgiveness. I think it goes with it. I think it comes, comes with the area. I mean, there's only a buyer and a seller who can afford to pay a $10,000 item might be able to pay an $11,600 item too, just as well. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm just curious how they get out to... As opposed to eleven, eleven hundred and sixty dollars, as opposed to eleven hundred and eighty dollars. You know, like this, the six, this, six, one, one six. I'm like, yeah, caught it doesn't on. really give. I, reason. I'm curious. One six versus why one six. six. Versus one six. So did you hear? It? No. So, so okay, well, Rebbe is saying that response. if somebody's overcharged, what is a level called overcharging? And it says one six. Uh, one six and under is okay. Or and, and one, si one six over is is considered overcharging the age. So I'm curious as to where that one six comes from. So sixteen percent, sixteen percent, right? That's the that's the amount. So less than sixteen percent, people will overlook. People, you know, they'll be mochel. But but over sixteen percent or exactly sixteen percent, they're ready. That's that's the Vera of oh no. And, and if it's over 60%, the whole sale is off. Because Tosu says, such a high price that you overcharged me, that's not, that's, the whole sale is gone. That's what I So the source of 1.6, so the Gavara brings down. And the idea is, I mean, I think it's, we have to look it up, but as far as I see here, the idea is more of a logic of a Svara, that people overlook up to a sixth. Did he do with the 160? No, 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 no. Up to a six. I would be able to understand 160 of more than 160. 160, like you get charged. 160, you can't understand either. No, they do, they do it from the uh, from the. Now, now you guys said no, because it becomes nullified. Yeah, but why not 149? So you want know where they got the mathematical equation? You want know where they got that exact amount? So it could be maybe maybe that yeah, it could be Hashem told my Hashem. No, but it, it, it's true. It, but now it works. That is the amount that if you have a, a drop of milk falls into your your soup, which is meat. That drop, if it's one sixtieth amount of the, of the soup, the meat soup, it will become nullified, and you won't taste it. But doesn't that the taste is gone? The the appearance is gone. It's it's because it's so minute in that amount. One sixtieth is the amount that it becomes it loses all of its effect. But doesn't that come? That amount come from the the hind quarter that we're not allowed to use. Yeah. So we that, learned that, 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 it out. Now we learn it out. One sixth. Yeah. One sixtieth. Right. We do learn it out from the uh, from. Uh, 
a part where the Gemara learns out a Gid Anusha. We do learn out that number, right? These numbers, 1 6 to 1 60, they're not made up. The Gemara is dealing with it. We'd have to look into the source of a sixth. But one thing is, the Rambam says that in terms of a sixth, that's how much people will overlook. And everybody be vocal. Agreeing? If they got overcharged, they're over, they're, they'll overlook that amount. Everybody's agreeing with that? And the other idea, the, the Rosh says a different idea. The Rosh says that anything under a sixth, so people wouldn't press charges because you might go to court and say, he overcharged me, and I think the price is this amount, but maybe the court will say, you're wrong, that's not the, the real market value. So it could be, it wasn't even, right, up till there, up till a sixth is a leeway. It could be acknowledging there's no such thing as exact values. Right. Right. It's right. always a variable, you know, right. you're willing to pay in, in this situation, so you can't have it just exactly, because who knows what, what a car is worth, right, like a car well, the, so, so that's what I'm saying, right, you're going to go to court, it could be it's different, di different things. I thought maybe the legal fees would show up to six, so it's not worth it. You know what would be interesting if legal fees are more than six. It was the last one that was to be sold, too. Now, right, now you have to see on each case, each case, what, what there is. Now, you are allowed to charge for, like, certain things, like, what your expense is to get the product, you could put that into the item. Right. If you have to pay for shipping to, to bring in to you know export and import, so you can put that in. You have to buy a, you have to have a storefront and everything. That you can put into the price. That's not that's not oh no. Oh no is when you when you just have the item and you just overcharge it and you uh, right and, and, and you go over the market value. Okay. Now the question here is now now that right so we got a sixth a, now, over six the sale is no good under six is no problem and a sixth exact. Exactly, you got to return the amount overpaid, but the sale still good. holds up, it's still uh, good. The amount, oh, the one sixth the overpaid? The one sixth, yeah. So up till there is okay. When you hit the six, you got to give it all back. This is very hard to. If it's exactly right on, I got to pay back three thousand dollars. But if it's a dollar less than the exact right on, I can keep the nineteen hundred ninety-nine dollars. You can ask this. You can ask this. You can ask this on every time. Wow. Every time we ever give a share, you'll say, "Well, up till there, it doesn't work." And then you go one more. You know, you can always ask this. One more penny. And all of a sudden, now it worked. What, what changed now? Right, this is, this is an have old some question. Kind of rule. Right, yeah, they always have. They made a rule. They made yeah. a. They put. They put the. the they, they put the the rule here. Yeah. And that's where the law is. Yeah, they drew the line there. You know, so you might say, well, what will be what one dollar earlier? You wasn't any problem. So that's 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 the the, the law. Even Hashem had Rachamim with when it came to uh, when it came to Avram asking for 20 people for f 10 people. Okay, he drew a line at them, but still he was willing to say. I'm sure you can see there's a lot in the whole Gemara, right? You can always ask this type of question, right? Like, what about like one under? Right? Why do you put it like this? You know, you could you could you know you could marry a lady. You could give her uh, you know let's say uh, a pruta, right? Let's say, let's say a nickel. Let's say I give her four and a half cents. Four and a half cents yeah. doesn't go. Yeah. Five cents does. Yeah. Right? Wait, wait, wait. Why is the kidney only four? Yeah. Only five. Yeah. Let's say I pay four point nine cents. Right? That's going to make the difference. That point. So that yes, that's where they estimated that the you have to give her a proper amount for uh, for to get married. You need to give that amount. That's what they set down. And if you do yeah. less, then that, then you didn't you didn't get to the line. You said that it's okay. Up to the market value, it's fine. Over the market value, but up to one sixth over, he has to get back the excess that he charged. Up to one sixth, he's okay. Oh, he's also okay. Right. Yeah. Because there's we give a little leeway. Yeah. Over one sixth. Once you get to a six, it's not a sale. No exactly, one exactly a six. Then it's a sale. But it's a sale, sale but you gotta get back any extra. That's right. And over one six, it's no, it's no then sale. you get back the, the money and, and he gets. Yes, then yeah. the sale is no avoid because no the Tulsa says because such an overpriced sale, which is so overpriced, it's like there was no sale. Right. So it's like a joke. And even if it's used and damaged. And even if it's used and, and damaged. Damaged. It's an interesting halacha here. Rabbi, can't you picture Irving back in time? I'm arguing this. Uh, no, but uh, no, it's an interesting idea. No, I know. He's Even if right. you used it, I hope right, I'm not the only which one means like if this. you buy it, you don't have to go back and talk. No, if, if you buy it, the minute you buy it and you realize that you were overcharged, you can't use it. Right now, now you can't use it. Right. But I think Kevin has had a scenario before. So, uh, right, so I have to get at this case. But the thing is, you're not allowed to use it once you buy it. Right. And if you want to do, if you want to, you want to get back your money. So now you can't use it because now you're stealing. 
because you're saying, what are, you, what are you saying when you're saying, I want to return it? Right? You're saying, he did all no, he stole, I'm giving back. It's not a sale, right? Tulsa is saying it's not a sale. So if it's not a sale, so you can't use it. It's not yours. You're, you're going to go back the next day and say, this camera is overcharged and it's not a sale. Right? You're going to bring him to Tulsa, and Tulsa says, such an exorbitant amount is not a sale. Right? Because it's a joke, obviously. So if it's not a sale, then you can't use it today. So therefore, you can't be on both sides of the coin. You can't use it once you decide that you don't, you were overcharged and you want to return it. You can't use it. That's stealing. And if you do, and if you do use it, you ready for this one? Right. And you, and you lose your right to avoid the sale. We want to ask you before and you sort of imply that the answer is different. I'm saying if you bought it knowing you were overcharged, you're saying that. Well, it depends what, what you want to do with it, right? Okay, so here, here the thing is, is the rule is in terms of using it. Once you use it, if you want to return it, once you use it, you can't return it. That's, that's the rule here. What if you only realize you were scammed after you used it? Oh. Oh, now that's different here. Oh. If you're ready, now, right, maybe that was your case. Right, if you're ready, uh, used it, right, I think you can still return it. You can still return it. You, you have to act immediately. You have to act immediately, but it's fine. I believe it's fine even though you used it. Yes. But you can't use it for the future. I think that's right. As soon as you come to the realization, you've got to start using it. Right. Right. Now, the same rule applies when you're a buyer and you walk into the store and the fellow doesn't realize what he got, right? He's selling something which is a very hot item, right? And he has no idea of the market value. Right? Let's say he's selling something, you know, that everyone needs, you know, something in it. And he doesn't realize he got it very cheap. He, he brought it, you know, with him. You know, he brought it back. Like, so, you know, he could bring some, you know, he brings something back from China. And, and, and the market value, he doesn't realize, is much higher. And you come in and you say, how much is it? And he thinks it's, it's very cheap, right? You have to think of a good example. He, sa he sells a sell to you for this price. He doesn't realize. So if it's less than a sixth of the market value, then the sale is no, it's no good. So if you pay up to five, Six of the price, you have to give it back. So if you paid, right? If you paid, right? Right. For five, six. Yeah. If you paid, right? Let's say you take a case, right? You have to think of a good item that you that you brought in, right? Let's say you know. I mean, if your discount was more than sixteen percent. Right. Basically. Right. You can't buy it. You got to tell the right. buyer. You gotta right. Let's say you went into the store, you bought, you're not into uh, fashions. You picked up a tie while you're, you picked up a you know a few ties in China, and yeah, you don't realize you bought them dirt cheap there. You come back here, you think, how much is a tie worth? Ten dollars. Your, your friend says, I need a tie. I don't have any ties. You say, okay, I'll sell you this one. I just bought it back from China. Ten dollars. Right? Now, how much is it really? Let's say it would be, let's say, fifty. Are you about more? Fifty. Fifty dollars. Okay. So fifty dollars, right? Or even let's take let's let's take sixty. Let's take sixty dollars. So sixty dollars. $60, he should be charging you $60 for it. Or up to $51. He could charge you, he could give you a little cheaper for up to $51. The ones he charges you $49, the sales don't go. Good. He doesn't realize that he's, he's being, he's making a mistake, and therefore the sales don't go. Good. It works backwards also. What if the seller doesn't care? Now, now, yeah, so that would be different. If, if the seller doesn't care, right, or, right, it could be then it would be okay because the seller's, uh, he's like, he's mo. But say, I've, I've got this time in China, and here you're a nice guy, you teach good classes, I want to give it to you for $10, yeah. that's no. what I paid for it. Right, yeah, you so. You know it's a $50 time. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that, that's okay, right, that's fine. The problem is only when, 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 when you're uh, doing it when he doesn't realize. Right, for example, let's say there's a sale, right, let's say there's a sale in the store. So could you do such a thing, right, let's sometimes they have like these crazy sales, yeah. and they want to get you in the store. So they'll give you like half price. Right. It's foreign warehouse. Right. So <laughs> you have to see exactly what, you know, see what the price is before the sale, after the sale. But, but there, that wouldn't be a problem for you to buy something, you know, dirt cheap from the, from the store. Because, because that's, they, here's the, exactly the point. Mr. Toledano hit it on the head today. That you, they're allowed to, they know the true value. They could waive their rights. You're, they're entitled to waive their rights and then there's no problem of a no. No problem whatsoever. 
Obviously, they both if they both aware of the price, that's no problem. You're right. So then, vice versa, on the hockey tickets, where the face value of the ticket is written on the ticket, 200. But I really want to go to this game, and I choose to pay 500 for that ticket. I've also waived my right as a buyer. Right. 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 So now, here we have to go to the next case. The next case, right? We're talking about hockey tickets. We're going from one case to another. So, so the first case we're saying very good, right? That the sale, right, you're allowed to buy something on very big sale because he waived his rights, right? He even advertised, he even advertised. If it would be a real advertisement, 50% off, you know, 30% off, anything, right? Anything, he's advertising anything more than how much? Anything more than 16%, right? When was the last time you saw a sale? Only 10% off, right? 30% off, 40%, anything under 16%, right? They're waiving their rights. They're allowed. It's clear. And therefore, there's no problem. Now, the next problem, next question here is let's say he's aware, the buyer is aware. He's, he's agreeing, he's masking, he's saying, I agree. He wants to go to the hockey game, right? That's what the scalpers do. They buy it, they get, they get the tickets, you know, $50, $60, then they can sell it for $200, right? $60, right? They could charge how much? They could charge $70 from the din, if you would, before any halacha, you know, that, but this would the halacha alone, it would be $70. But there's a new idea here, and that's cool that they understand what they're getting into. And they're doing it optionally because they want to, it's worth a lot to them. See here, see here, see here see, that, that, that was your question, right? This is a new question here. That, that was what you asked before, and it's interesting here. If you, if you want to do it, it should be okay. I believe, I believe it's okay. It's, it's an interesting idea. I believe that would be the same thing. That, that should be the same idea. Right? Your question was, if you're going to demand a refund later, right? Yeah. That's the whole, that, that's the question. Yeah. But in terms of, of your question, I believe he's waiving his rights. Should be the same thing. Yeah. Well, what about if, if it's like, there's a few problems with that, though, because, you know, let's say you're with your son or something, and he's like, oh, dad, I really, really need to go. I want to see this game, and, you know, I'm going to see this game, so you're stuck. Right? So they okay, well, suddenly a ticket to this game. Well, I know that you really want your desk for it. You never take your son next to you when you're scalping. You keep the son in the car. You know, the situation, like, why are you so well willing to overpay for this? I think you have in the desk, I have like water in the desert. Okay. Right? Okay. There's only so much, but okay. I haven't had a drink in 10 hours, okay. so I'm dying of right. thirst, yeah. and now I'm ready. To, I don't mind paying $100 for glass Okay, of water. it doesn't matter if it's your son who's making you desperate or you're being desperate because you're a hockey fan yourself. Either way, either way, you, you turn desperate. You have knowledge that that you're that you're being ripped off. Right. right, right. The scalpers right. make their money by buying the ticket from. He has tickets and doesn't want to go to the game. I'm the scalper. They're $100, right? I'll give you 50 for them. I know. He wants yeah, to get rid of it. Okay, I'll take him from Now, oh, this guy comes by with his son. Yeah, they're dead. Dad, dad, I want to go to the game. Yeah. 200. Right. Yeah. Give me. Yeah. He knows I paid way. Right. Less. Right. There. There is knowledge. Market value was fifty, and this right. is two hundred. Yeah, right. But even worse. It's actually right. the situation is even worse. Because what the scalpers do is they go when the tickets are first on sale, uh, and they buy all the tickets. So when I want to buy a ticket at the box rate, it's sold out before I can get there. And the scalpers have monopolized and taken all my tickets. And now, if I want to go to the game, I have to deal with these guys who are marking it up by two hundred percent. Right. And I never. They stole okay. my opportunity to buy it at the fair price, and now they're grieving me. And, I, and you're saying it's okay because they're telling me they're doing this. One it's, of clear the it's clear here. If you, if you're waiving your rights. You could even, uh, yeah. if you're agreeing to buy it, right. to buy the tickets, whether it's because you want it, because your son pushed you, and now you want it. Well, you want it now because you're not really. So you're agreeing. You're not being fooled. Yeah, right. You know the price. That's right. The whole thing is around taking advantage of somebody who right. has more right. knowledge than the other guy. Right. And you're using that to your advantage, either as a buyer or as a seller. Yeah, that you're not allowed to right. It's all about the knowledge. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But how come, the, yeah, how come it doesn't come into play a person's standard? For instance, there, there are people that just get by day to day, and $10 to them is like a penny to somebody else. You know, like the value of their money is... Right. Do you know right. what I mean? That's what you want to ask. So therefore, in a case of, let's say... I don't know exactly what my question is, but, is not the right <laughs> but a dollar to me could be 10 cents to you, and $2, you know, like... But this is... arbitrary 16% is 
unfair because it's yeah. yeah. to some people. Well, I'm not even really that. looking at that. Yeah, like, 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 like ten thousand dollars to somebody to give oh, as tzedakah right. is that's not nice. not say tzedakah, but let's say ten thousand dollars for somebody to spend on uh, a suit is ludicrous, right. but for him it's not. But for somebody just spending 500 hours in a challenge for a suit. No, but that's what I told you. It, but but the, the price, so for him, you could overcharge him, the price is higher, and the amount you could overcharge him is that 16% is a bigger figure than the amount you could overcharge someone just at the regular suit store. But he wants a progressive system like the tax rate. If you make 200000 your tax yeah, rate is 50%. If you make 20000 your tax rate is 20%. Yeah, yeah. The, so the, the, the rate is locked in. The rate is a 6 <laughs> and it, it, yeah. the rate is according to what you buy a sixth more or a sixth less right that's, that's the, 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 the halacha yeah that's, that's locked in now this is interesting now you have to look in terms of uh, land in terms of selling land because here is there a problem with overcharging for land because land's a little bit different because yeah, it's not a uniform it's not the same item like a pop can it's yeah well right so what what, what What's, yeah, but, but what is it? It's, it's a piece of land. Piece of land, but each land, piece of land is unique. In the, oh, you know. now, there is, now here is a little bit different here, because here the the Gemara learns out that on karka, on land, there's no way not. There's no problem of overcharging in land. Uh -huh. Now, on that is an argument. There's an argument. What does that mean there's no or no? Does it mean that you're allowed to overcharge on land? Or does it mean that you're not allowed, but if you overcharge, then the, there's no, the rules don't apply of giving the money back? Which means he, he went against the Torah. He went against the Torah, but the rules of the, the sale is no good or the, the money goes back, that doesn't apply. So that, that's an argument between two sides in the uh, in the back of the Gemara and they, 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 they go into this this whole idea because the Gemara learns out that it's only money or only movable objects because look at the verse the verse that we just read what was the verse we just read right page 698 so the verse states if you sell something to your friend and you sell it to your friend and what's the next word Icona Miyad Amisa. What does that mean? But it's saying there what does that mean? The hand. the hand, right? You bought it, what is that? The hand. The hand. You bought it out of the hand of your friend. Oh. 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 So the Gemara learns out, it means it, you bought it from the hand, right? Is that how they, yeah. they teach it? That's how they explain it? You bought it from his hand. So the Gemara learns out, it's only something which is nickname, something which is transaction from hand to hand. And what is that? That is movable objects. So Gemara says, but on land, land is not movable objects. So therefore, land wouldn't have this, this halacha of ona. But on that, on that, there's an argument, what does that mean? Does that mean they can just overcharge him? Or does it mean that the laws of getting paid back that, you know, over the six, maybe those those laws don't apply, but you have maybe gone against the Torah of don't rip up your, don't rip up your friend. So now, the first question here, Irving is jumping on me. How could I say... I'm still bothered by the other stuff. Right? No, but you have, Irving asked a great question. How could the Gemara learn out that there's no or no, that there wouldn't be any, at least, at least to some, de some degree, there's no problem of ripping off your friend in land. How could that be true? But you learn it from this verse. But what is the whole verse talking about? Let's take the whole context. It's not your land to begin with, maybe. Well, 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 it all goes back to Hashem and the Jews. No, but, but the question is that the whole parsha here that we're talking about, we started speaking about land, right? That those words, that word miyad is, happens to be talking about something which you could transfer from hand to hand. But let's look at the surrounding sukkim. We read them inside, right? You're buying the crops. How many crops do you're buying from Yovel? till now the whole parish is talking about land so how in the world could the Gemara say well the word miyad is only talking about something from hand to hand. How could you make such a... How does this fit into the whole parsha? If we were to buy or sell land, I would give you the keys, you'd give me the money. Or the deed, I'd give you the deed to give me the money. There's always an exchange like... 
There's no. I mean, there's a star in all of them. The land doesn't but move, but there's always some movement of an item. Uh, uh, hey, there's no such thing as a sale without that. If you're in a lawyer's office that's selling land, they're always like, give me the funds, I'll release the keys. Uh, right? There's always a. Uh, could be interesting, interesting idea. They had the but the keys are not really, you know. Let's say, let's say the doors open. Let's say there's no the doors open. Yeah, you can break. Yeah, the, the keys symbolize ownership. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Or the it's, deed, right? it's a good question. It's a good question. Uh, but you're really not buying the keys. I hear, but you're saying. The question is the symbolism. Is that enough? That's a good question. What about the? Think about it. It's a symbolism. Is that enough to be called that you're buying something? It symbolizes the ownership of that object. I hear. Ownership of the land, the keys, the but you but you're not really buying. You're not really buying the keys. That's not yeah. 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 It's a good question. It's a good question. We have to think about it. But uh, in terms of this question, right, this is what I think you started asking, Irving. Mean, how could the Gemara say that that on land you could maybe overcharge if the verse is talking? Right, read the verse. Pasuk Tesvav. It says for the amount of years after Yovel, that's how much you're paying.